minister to them. This morning, I want you to take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Romans. Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16. And we were looking at verses 19 and 20 as their opening text. Title of the message today is Overcoming the Limited Power of Satan. If you're taking notes this morning, it would be good. I have some things I want to share with you. I want to remind you some things about our struggle, about our war that we're engaged in with Satan. And I got a lot of good news. How many ready for some good news? Yeah. Folks, I got some good news to share with you this morning that I believe is going to bless your heart and encourage you. As I was preparing this message today, uh, for today, um, God just really ignited my spirit. Whenever you get in the Word, He does that. Well, let's just say this. Sometimes I read the Word and I'm like, oh my. I need, to, I need to work on that. But there's so many times I just get lifted up in my heart and realizing, man, like the song says, my hope is in you, Jesus. And again, we were worshiping the Lord, and I, I was so overcome with the Holy Ghost. How many know what it feels like to just get overcome with the Lord's presence? You know, we as a church believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You can read about them in 1 Corinthians chapters 12 and 13 and 14. We believe that God can give words of knowledge and wisdom, healing, right? We believe that God can give a message in tongues. He can give a word of prophecy. We believe in those things, that they are gifts that God has given to the church by the Holy Spirit. So today I felt the Holy Spirit prompting me, prompting me to give you a word. And it's from the Holy Spirit of God. And we can all bear witness. The Bible says when you receive a word, test it with the word of God. Make sure it's true. How many of you believe that God is preparing his church? He's preparing his bride. And if you're with me, even as I was sharing that word of the Holy Spirit with us a few moments ago, I said, Lord, you know, I'm your pastor. I'm your shepherd. I want to see you prepared. I want to see you ready. I want to see you with your lamps lit. And I have shared some recent messages. And one of the messages I shared with you, and, and I'm not mentioning it today specifically in my message, so I'm mentioning it to you now. One of the things that the devil has really tried to do, and he's a master at it, really, is wearing down the saints. He loves to wear down the saints. Because if he can wear you down spiritually in your life, he gets a foothold. And Paul said, don't give the devil a foothold. Listen to my message last week. If you weren't here, and you can get online and listen to it through our webpage. Talk to us about in the book of Jude. There's only, I asked the kids on Wednesday nights, how many chapters in the book of Jude? They got it right. One chapter. Uh, we looked at uh, verses 17 through 25 uh, of Jude. And one of the things that Jude was talking about was we need to build ourselves up in our most holy faith. And so that's what we're to be doing. And we're asking the Lord to help us in these days. Let my faith become even stronger. Amen. Now, we are engaged in warfare against the enemy. We all can attest to that. And Romans 16, 19 says, Everyone has heard about your obedience. So I am full of joy over you. But I want you to be wise about what is good and innocent of what is evil. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. Can I get a hallelujah? hallelujah? Praise God. Father, thank you for this word. Let it speak to our hearts today. In Jesus' name, amen. This verse, or these verses here, speak specifically, as we know, the book is called Romans. So it's written, Paul's writing to the church in Rome. Now, the church in Rome is facing persecution. They're facing all kinds of things that go against their faith. You might say, Pastor, I feel like I got some things coming against me, against my faith. That could be true. You may be feeling that at on your job or with those that you're around from day to day. But the church in Rome, like many of us, well, they were harassed. They were being mistreated. The church in Rome and the Christians were feeling misunderstood, even verbally attacked physically beaten, 
And yes, church, some of these Roman Christians gave their life for their faith. But here's a word of encouragement that Paul gives to the church in Rome. And how many know we can take these words for us too? I'm applying them to me. I'm applying them to you as well. You see, Satan can't do this indefinitely. His time is limited. Did you hear me? Satan's time is limited. And I give you the promise that through Christ, he says, you will soon crush Satan under your feet. A promise was given to the church in Rome to stay steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For your labor is not in vain. He was giving them a word to keep their eyes focused, to keep their hearts right, to know that it's going to be worth it because heaven is for the overcomer. Now is not the time for us to walk in defeat in our faith. If anything, our faith needs to get stronger. Would you agree with me? My faith needs to get stronger. And I need the Lord's help. And I'm going to encourage you in that this morning as I have in my last couple of messages. Remember, we're on the Lord's side. He's our deliverer. Whatever you're, and our defender, whatever you're facing, whether it's an attack or an harassment of the enemy. Does anybody know what it means to be harassed by Satan or the enemy? Huh? I use Satan, but I don't know that one person is that important on this planet that Satan's after you specifically. But I'll tell you what, the enemy and all the wickedness is certainly after the church. It always has been. Note today that your heavenly Father is very much aware and has promised you victory. He's promised it to you. Aren't you thankful? No one wants to go and play a basketball game and say, guess what, team, we're going to lose today. But give it your everything. I mean, that doesn't sound like a lot of fun to me. <laughs> Who are we going to blame for the loss today? Because we know we're going to lose. No, we don't do that. Church, we're victors. We're on the winning side of, of glory and of eternity. Each of us are an integral part of that victory. If anything, the enemy wants to cause you to think that you're defeated, harass you for your faith, wear you out. As your pastor, I want to encourage you, don't let that happen. Build yourself in your faith today and once again. Now, let me remind, I'm going to be reminding you of a few things today so you can take notes with me. But um, let me remind you, first of all, that Satan does, does have power. Satan does have some power. Let me encourage you again to realize that the Lord has given us the promise to be victorious over it. Christ is living in us. Is he living in you? Scripture says Christ lives in us, the hope of glory, right? I don't want to face another day without Christ living in me. Amen? Okay, here's a few things. Well, let's, let's go through these this morning as reminders to us. And when we get to the end, I hope that you can walk out of here living in your victory and realizing your place in Jesus Christ. Again, overcoming the limited power of Satan. First of all, let us be aware that Satan's power is to afflict. To afflict you is limited. And let me take you to some scriptures. We have them listed up there. Many of us know the story of Job, and I'm going to read some of this to you. In Job chapter 1 and verse 6, one day the angels, or the sons of God, as some translations put it, came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came with them. And the Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From roaming throughout the earth. Satan, or going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. I hope that's true for us today. Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied. Have you not put a hedge around him and his household and everything he has? You've blessed the works of his hands so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. But now stretch out your hand and strike everything he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, Very well then, everything he has is in your power 
but on the man himself do not lay a finger. Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. There are afflictions in life that we see from the Word of God has a direct confrontation with Satan. He afflicts. He afflicted Job. And as we go through the scriptures, we see a time and time again where the enemy was about when one of his attacks and one of his weapons was to bring affliction. But notice with me, God was still in charge. And God had to give permission. Satan knows those who have the blood that covers them. Satan knows those who trust in Psalm 91. Go back and read it again. Satan knows the children of God. By the way, Paul tells us in the scriptures in the New Testament, he tells us that the saints of God have the seal of the Holy Spirit on us. We're the children of God. and He recognizes that. The Satan and the enemy recognize that there is a power at work in you. It's Christ. Yes. He does. But Satan was given some power. Again, did you notice the word power was used? And he inspired an attack, verse 15. He inspired an attack from the Savians, and they killed all the servants of Job. In verse 16, Satan in an affliction caused fire to fall from earth. Some say, believe it was probably some kind of a lightning bolt or some fire came from earth and they themselves that were gathering there thought it was coming from God. It's a great lightning bolt. Men consider, listen, even today, men consider every storm, lightning, winds, and other things causing disaster to be the calamity of God. But I want you to pause for a moment to understand that Satan does have some power. They did not realize in Job's day that the devil is the prince and power, there's the word again, of the air. Ephesians 2, verses 1 through 3. And at times he is permitted in the use of such things, but in a limited way. Verse 18, Satan is allowed to use the elements of nature and caused a mighty wind to sweep from the desert and it struck the house, it collapsed, and everyone inside died. Let me just pause, and I've mentioned this before in years and messages past. When you think of the story of Jesus and the disciples out on the stormy sea, and they thought they were going to die. The winds were howling, the water was coming in. And what did Jesus do? He stood up and he rebuked the winds and the waves. And it was stilled in an instant. That goes to my point that there are some storms in life that have their origin from Satan. I can tell you this, Satan did not want them to get to the other side. You know what happened when they got to the other side? They met a demon-possessed man in the, in the, in the uh, cemetery, right? Remember the story? He got saved, miraculously saved, and the demons were crying out, what do we do? Don't do that. And they go into the pigs, right? And then he goes, and he starts telling his story to the ten cities of the Decapolis on the, wet, on the east side of, that, of the Sea of Galilee. Here's what I can tell you. Satan knows when things get very unsettled, and that God is up to something. Satan knows God is up to something. The Holy Spirit of God is about to move. Something is about to happen, and I've got to do something about it. That's why we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities and powers of the air. So some affliction like this comes from the enemy. He's, he's doing his best to push us back, to hinder you, to hinder me, to hinder the church as it was in, in the church in Rome where he talked about the, you're going to soon crush Satan under your feet. By the way, in reference to Jesus, where is Satan right now? Under his feet. 
And where are you seated? In heavenly places, in heavenly realms. If I'm seated with Christ and, and Christ has Satan under his feet, guess where Satan is to you? He's under your feet. Boy, I got some victory this morning. How about you? Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. I love that chorus we sing. Beautiful name. I mean, the name of Jesus sends him to fly, flee. Well, God also does use nature in forms of judgment. Yes, he does. So I'm, not, I'm giving a balance here. I'm letting you know that sometimes God uses nature in forms of judgment as he himself rained down fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah. Let's go a little further in the book of Job in chapter 2, verse 1. Another day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them to present himself before him. And the Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From what? Roaming through the earth, throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There was no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil, and he still maintains his integrity, though you incited me against him to ruin him without any reason. Skin for skin, Satan replied. Satan's terrible. I told you, you can hate him. That's okay, because he sure hates you. He's out to steal and kill and destroy. So a man will give all he has for his own life, Satan says. Isn't that interesting? I'm going to go back to that. You know what? He's, Satan says, a man will give all he has for his own life. What does Jesus say? What will man give in exchange for his soul? Hmm. Satan knows about the power of your choices and your decisions. And then when push comes to shove, he knows if you don't have Christ and the Holy Spirit and living in you, you'll do anything. You'll do anything. But what will you give for exchange, you see? So Satan knows this. He knows the nature of man. But now he says, stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bones, and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, very well then, he is in your hands. But you must spare his life. Again, the limited power of Satan. He had to get permission. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and afflicted Job with painful sores from the soles of his feet to the crown of his head. Then Job took a, can you imagine this? He took a piece of broken pottery and scraped himself with it as he sat among the ashes. His wife said to him, are you still maintaining your integrity? Curse God and die. He replied, you are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? In all this, Job did not sin in what he said. What do we learn from that? Satan was allowed to inflict Job with the painful sores, but not take his life. Remember, when you think back to the book in Corinthians about the life of Paul, Paul was given a thorn in the flesh. 2 Corinthians 2, 7. For the purpose, God had a purpose in that, to keep him from being conceited because of the surpassing revelations that was given me, he said, in a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me. We know that Paul pleaded with the Lord three times, but, permit, but God permitted it and told him, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. And so in trying to understand things from, that, from these perspectives, from Job and from Paul, understanding that there are times in our lives where God does give some kind of a permission for something to bring something good in our life. How many know that God makes all things good? Right? He works all things for the good to them who love the Lord. God worked out a good thing in Paul's life. God did eventually work out a good thing in Job's life. But look what he had to go through. Look what Paul had to endure. You and I together, listen, listen, we're going to have trouble and trial and affliction, but God will see us through it all. That's the Word of God. You can bank on that. Satan inspired and spoke through Job's wife, the one who was closest to him, to tempt him to curse God. 
Remember, we don't battle against flesh and blood. I mentioned it a moment ago. I think about how Jesus had to look into the eyes of Peter. Peter speaking kind of boldly and arrogantly. Jesus looked at him and said, Get thee behind me, Satan. There was a power of the enemy at work. And I tell us, and I encourage us, how many are like, Lord, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be pleasing and acceptable. I don't want anything I say to be used by the enemy to bring affliction to somebody else. The Bible says don't cause your words to stumble someone else. Whether it's the words you say or the things you type and post or the, whatever you're doing, Remember, don't, be, don't allow the enemy to use you to stumble and cause someone hurt in their life. Are you with me? Say amen. amen. We give a careful thought of those things. Because sometimes our emotions, look at her, the wife, curse God and guy. She, got, she was so frustrated, she's watching him scrape himself, how miserable he was. And you know what, Job, just end it. No, I won't. And that had to be a strong test right there. So Satan, but here's the thing. Satan's power is limited. How many of you know when we see Jesus, all of this is going to be gone? Hallelujah. All affliction is gone, and God's going to see you through to the other side, and you can rejoice. Amen? Amen. Satan's power to have complete freedom to destroy all lives is limited. His power to have complete freedom to destroy all lives is limited. For the believer, let me remind you the words of Jesus. He said in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, I have given you. Who is you right now? Us. It applies to the church. I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the what? Power of the enemy. So he's given us power. He says, then he says, nothing will harm you. Let me believe that's a powerful scripture for us today. Knowing that the devil is a, he's a stealer and a destroyer, he said, listen, you're going to have power to overcome the enemy. Romans 16, 20 in our text this morning, again reminding us that the God of peace will soon crush Satan under our feet. Once again, I also want to Remember to keep a balance in what I am saying to you this morning because God did allow Daniel to get thrown into the lion's den, right? But God delivered him from the lion's den. Praise the Lord. Amen. You might get thrown in the lion's den like, God, what's happening to me? God said, I'm with you. I'm there with you. Hang in there. Don't be afraid. Three white, the three Hebrew men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Did I get that right? Speak fast. That's dangerous with those three words. <laughs> uh, put them in the fire. Can you imagine? They know right there, we're walking to a fire, we're toast. But we're doing it. God allowed that. Wow, Lord, I don't understand. Why, you, why haven't you come to my rescue? Walk into the fire. Some of you say, I feel like I've been in the fire sometimes. The king looks and says, wow, who, who's that fourth one in there with you? He looks, that's devised, looks like the son of God. They come out, don't even smell like smoke. Can you imagine that? What a miracle. But they had to walk into the fire. But there's the balance. Some of those Roman Christians were martyred for their faith. And they could say, God, where are you? Or they doused them with oil and burnt them at the stake or threw them into the lion's den. They were martyred. The church in Rome, the Christians were blamed for the things that were going on in the city and the fire. They took a lot of slack and a lot of verbal abuse and physical abuse. Where are you, God? Have you ever felt that way? God, where are you? Listen, Satan's power is limited, but we may have to walk through some things in life. And God is working on us. He's encouraging us. He's strengthening us. And as the word came to this morning, He's preparing us. God's preparing us. 
Be in the Word of God. Believe the promises of God. I like a promise in Psalm 34, 7. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear Him and He delivers them. As you're walking through life, just thank God. God, you're in it. The Lord, you're, you're encamping around me. Hallelujah. And if anything comes my way, God, you already know about it. You know, you know what? God already knows what... God is never not knowing. Because He's a know-it-all. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us think we're the know-it-alls, and God's like, oh, man, you just have no clue. <laughs> yeah. Julie and I, through our life together, we've seen some things happen in our life. We're like, God, do you really know what you're doing? Or why are you allowing this to happen? Why, Lord? But as you walk through life, God gives you an understanding, and, and the Holy Spirit sh shares things with you to say, you know what, this is why I took you through that. This is why I let that happen. Now listen, the story of Job, we didn't finish reading the whole story of Job. I just showed you what he was doing to him. But you know when it was all done, God blessed Job more than he was before. God blessed him. Wow. Incredible blessings came his way because he refused to turn his back on God in the midst of all of his affliction. We have authority. Church, we can speak words of life over people. Life over your family. I told you that uh, in, a, in a message some time ago that, that when I was outside and I was working in the yard, and, and I've done this more than once, believe me. And uh, I just turn around and look at my house, and I pray a blessing over my home. I stretch my hands towards my home. Elijah, I stretch the hands towards our home, and I prayed over you. I prayed over your brother and sister. I prayed over your mom. I prayed over our family and our our son and daughter-in-law. I mean, I just kept praying a blessing over my home. I mean, you know what? The Bible says he puts a hedge around your home, a hedge around your family. Even if some of them really maybe at this point aren't living for God like they should. Aren't they thankful they got a praying grandma and a praying mom and a praying dad and a praying grandpa, right? That are praying the blood of Jesus Christ over them. Here's a third one. Satan's power to tempt people is limited. Can you say Amen. His power to tempt you is limited. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, so what does that tell you? We're all going to be tempted, right? When you are tempted, He will, catch that word, he will also provide a way out or a way of escape so that you can stand up under it. We're all going to be tempted, amen? We all know what it's like to fall into the temptation. God does not do the tempting. Did you hear me? God does not do the tempting. As a matter of the Scriptures, in the book of James... We are told that each one is tempted by his own lusts. You're dragged away and enticed. It's going to give birth to sin, and after sin gets full-blown, it leads to death. Because what? The wages of sin is death. So it ultimately comes back to your choice and your decision, as it was in Adam and Eve in the garden. They had to make a decision. Their own lust. Ooh, that's pleasing to the eye. I bet you that's going to taste good. Hmm, maybe God's not looking out for our best interest. Maybe God's a little bit jealous. Maybe, and we, all those things that the, that the enemy throws at it, and the enemy works on your own lust. He works on your own desires. Hmm. Having victory over temptation is conditioned on your response. Having the victory over temptation is conditioned on your response. Satan can't make you give in and sin. He can't make you give in and sin. That is your choice. Jesus was tempted in all points as we, yet without sin. He was put in a position throughout his life. Specifically, we have recorded his temptation in the wilderness. But he was tempted through his whole life and said, no, nope, I'm making a decision, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to honor God and his word. 
Joseph had to make a temptation. That young man, he fled from the temptation of Potiphar's wife. He says, I got to get out of here. This is a trap of the enemy. You know what? Have you ever felt like sometimes the devil's kind of setting a trap up for you? He's got a situation there you didn't expect. You're like, oh, I got to get out of this. I got to use some wisdom. I got to get. I got to get. We're told to flee the very appearance of evil. Whose decision is that? That's yours. You say, no, I can't go there. I can't do that. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 10 <coughs> in the Living Bible translation puts it this way. Winking at sin leads to sorrow. Who's doing the winking? Us. So we got to be careful where we're doing the winking at, right? Huh. I came across the quote. The greatest saint can stand only as long as he depends on God and continues in obedience to the gospel. I'll say it again. The greatest saint can stand only as long as he depends upon God and continues in obedience to the gospel. What's the point? Satan's power to tempt you is limited. He will not tempt, allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. Some of you say, but Pastor Dave, man, I felt it big time. I mean, it was a temptation like nothing I've ever had before. But God loves you so much as his child, he knows what you can handle. And you're going to say no, right? I hope, I pray. Say, Lord, help me. Can you imagine Job? God knew how much he could handle. <laughs> We're like, if I was Job, oh my goodness. I don't know if I could have done that. But you weren't Job. And some of you are saying, thank God. <laughs> yeah. A father knows his kids, right? I know my kids. I know what they can handle. Sometimes I want them to handle more. But I know what they can handle. And I don't want to set them up for defeat. God, as your heavenly Father, does not set you up for defeat. He loves you. So much, he sent his son to die for you. I think that love is amazing. It's incredible. Because he set you up, he wants to set you up for victory, not defeat. But you again have to make a choice. Number four, Satan's power to harass, and as we mentioned a moment ago, to tempt. So his power to harass, tempt, taunt, and depress you is limited when you exercise a submission of yourself to God. What's that scripture? Uh, James chapter 4 and verse 7 says this. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. How many of you want the devil to flee from you today? Just leave me alone. Satan and the demons, get out of here. Leave me alone. Okay? Here's what you have to do. Because again, he is limited when you submit yourself to God. You're submitting everything. You're saying, Lord, all I am and ever I hope to be, I submit it to you. I submit my mind, my body, my desires, everything, Lord, I just surrender to you. Take it all, Lord, I belong to you. You will then have a power within you, the Holy Spirit working in you, to resist the devil. All of a sudden, the temptation comes around, and you're like, no, nope, no doing. Why? Because I submitted myself to God. Aha! How many have those aha moments? You want to resist the devil? Submit yourself to God. Start your day out right. Say, today, I'm going to live for God. I'm not going to live for my flesh, and I'm not going to displease my Heavenly Father. You do that, then all those temptations come your way, and you're like, nope, no can do. I've given my heart to God. I'm not going to do that. And the devil's like, oh, man. And he flees from you. Because what? He sees the power of God at work in your life. He sees the Holy Spirit working in your life. He's like, I can't bother them. They're covered. Let's go bother somebody else. You see, there's a key there to us. Submit to him. Submit to God. And he flees. So are you feeling a harassment of the enemy? Have you ever felt that way? feeling overwhelmed with guilt. We've all been there, if we're honest. Overwhelmed with guilt, maybe some shame, maybe some despair. 
Are you starting to doubt the promises of God? These are all things that the enemy uses against us. I'm going to say to you in your life, it's time for the devil to flee you, leave you alone. Rise up in the beautiful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Rise up in the power of His name. Rise up in the Word of God as Jesus spoke to Satan and said, it is written. I'm telling you what, part of submitting to God is quoting the Word. Filling your mind with the Word of God. Turn the news off. Turn the television off. Turn off social media. Turn it all off and say, Lord, I submit to you. Fill your mind and your heart with that which pleases and acceptable to God and watch the devil flee and your countenance change. Why is that person always so excited and happy in Jesus? Don't they know what's going around here? Don't they know what's happening? Oh, my hope is in you, Lord. Hallelujah. My faith is in Christ, and the devil has to flee. i got to tell you something. This is what I believe. I believe we're living in the days where the devil's going to have to flee the church. You say, what do you mean by that? I'm pausing from my notes. Did you see what I just did? I moved away. Because here's what I believe. I believe we're living in the days as the Spirit bears witness to us today and in our own lives that when God comes back for His church, He's coming back, as I mentioned last week, for a radiant church without spot or wrinkle. He's coming back for a church that's walking in their faith. Because Jesus said, when I come back, will I find faith on the earth? How many want to be in the number? I want to be the faithful. I want to be one that hasn't let my lamps gone out. I want to be alert and I want to be looking for His coming. So I'm not taken by, by surprise. I'm living my life each day walking in my faith, exercising my walk with God and winning people to Jesus. Do you, do you get in your spirit right now? I believe right now that God is preparing the church for a mighty outpouring of the Holy Ghost. The devil, or, or excuse me, God is not going to let the, do, the devil show off too much longer. And he's going to raise up the church. The devil's doing a lot of showing off. And I don't like it. A lot of acting out in our flesh and a lot of sin and stuff going on. The Antichrist is the spirit of lawlessness. How many think lawlessness is in the world? Where does that come from? That comes from the enemy. He's showing it off. God says, uh-uh. There's a limited time for that devil. You don't have unlimited access to show off your lawlessness, especially with my church around. How many of you are like with your kids? You're like, uh-uh. That's it. Parents, have you ever gotten to the point and said, enough of that. Those are my kids. Enough of that. I'm going to, matter of fact, I'm going to reward them for their faithfulness. I'm going to do something for them. I'm going to just give them a, uh, something special. I'm just going to pour out some extra love on them. Do you know what? Nothing in this world shall separate you from the love of God. The Bible tells us that. doesn't what, matter what happens. And I believe that if we will be faithful, and if we will get hungry for God this year, yes, and I say this year, this is a critical time for the church. And you look to each other and you encourage each other in the faith. And you say, wait a minute, the devil's been wearing down that saint. He's been wearing down that brother. You be the, you be the vessel. You be the voice that can pray for that person to encourage that brother and sister in the Lord, saying, come on, we can do this with Jesus. I believe God wants to pour out His Spirit in these days. That's Bible. He wants to do that. And we know the devil knows his time is short. And that takes me to the last point. Satan's power is to go about stealing, killing, and destroying, but it will come to an end. Can you say amen? It will come to an end. He's got limited time, and it's running out. Woo! Glory to God. His time is running out. He has an appointed time for eternal judgment. There were demons who were cast out by Jesus. And they ask him a question. Have you come to torture us or torment us before the appointed time? They know. And they're trying to make their show of their attacks and their scheming and their lying and their destroying and, and all of that to throw it in the face of God. Jesus said, I'm going to give power to my church. Power to my church. To you and to I. With authority. That the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. That we have that power in His name. Against the limited power of Satan. Guess what? Satan's got limited power. But the power that lives within us. 
Hallelujah. Is unlimited. Can you get excited? Say amen. I got the unlimited power of Almighty God living in my life against the limited power of Satan. Amen. The weapons that I fight with are not carnal, but they are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. Take that devil in Jesus' name. I pray that God raises up some Gideons. Hallelujah. Some more Moseses and, and Abrahams and Elijahs and prophets of God and women like Deborahs and Ruths and Esthers in these days. How many believe God's raising them up? Amen. Hallelujah. Pray for your young people. We are blessed as a church to have so many young people in our church and involved in ministry. I believe God's up to something. Devil's like, oh man, what are we going to do? Church, be praying like you've ever prayed before. Be in the Spirit. Be watching your life. Be hungry for more of God. Could it be that this is the year that God is going to pour out upon us special anointing and blessing and the Word of God is going to go forth? Hallelujah. I believe this. I believe God says, uh-uh, you've got power that's limited. You've got influence that's limited. There's my church and they're full of my spirit and I'm going to use them in these days. Revelation 20, 20. And I close with this. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur where the beast and the false prophets had been thrown. There they were tormented day and night forever and ever. That's his appointed time and he knows it. But I speak to you this morning. Greater is he, as 1 John 4, 4 says, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Elaine, would you come to the keyboard and... Anybody else that's going to help her? We're going to sing a very familiar song of victory. I believe it with all my heart. We're going to leave today with this song. As they're preparing, Satan has power again, but limited. How I many you know that also? We're not singing this one today, but I like there's power, power, wonder-working power in what? The blood of the Lamb. You should sing that today. Listen, we're going to face the devil's afflictions. We may face sickness and disease. We may face some temptation. We may feel as though the enemy is scheming to taunt us, to depress us, to destroy us, and to shipwreck us. But I'm telling you what, that God has made a way for you to live in victory. Can you say amen? God has made a way. Satan's future is sure. My future, I want my future to be sure. Ask yourself, am I ready? Do I know Christ? Is he in my life? You know, before you leave today, you can be sure of your destiny in Christ. You can be sure that you're on your way to heaven. Ask Christ to forgive your sins. Ask Him to come into your life. Ask Him to make you whole. Ask Him to give you a purpose in life. Every child of God, listen, you got a purpose in Jesus today. I hope that you leave built up in a faith in Christ. Hallelujah. God's working something out in your life, isn't He? He's working something out in His church. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. So I'm going to trust Him. Trust Him. Don't waver in that. Know that God's got a plan. How many want to be right in the center of His plan? Wave at me. I'm going to be right in the center of His plan. Hallelujah. Father, I thank You as we go today. God, I pray for this church I love so much. I pray for these folks. I love them, Lord. God, I pray as we walk and live as a family of God, that God in the days that lie before us, hallelujah, that the Holy Spirit would rise up within us. Lord, let a deeper hunger and a deeper thirst for the things of God well within our soul. God, let the joy of the Lord be our strength. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that, God, we walk as those that would be humbled. Lord, that we would walk showing mercy, showing grace. Let our words be seasoned with salt. Lord, may the world see us as children of God that love you and that are very careful and cautious of how we live our lives for you. Lord, I pray today and I pray for the days to come that many souls will come to know Jesus Christ in the days to come. I pray, Father, for sons and daughters to come to Christ. I pray for grandchildren to come to Christ. I pray for moms and dads and in-laws to come to the Lord. Father, I ask this in Jesus' name. 
Lord, I pray as we go to this through this year that, God, you will lead us and direct our every step. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that the limitless power of the Holy Spirit of God lives in my soul, in our soul. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you as you go today. Go in Christ. And